All righty. Uh, hello, Facebook and internet. Thank you for watching Hudgens Talks. My name is Kate Driscoll. I'm the Public Programs Manager for the Hudgens Center for Art and Learning. And today I get to talk to Cynthia Fergun. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. Well, thank you for inviting me. So for people who aren't familiar with you or your work, will you sort of just introduce yourself? Okay. Um, I create fine art using repurposed paper. That's sort of the short version of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, as a collage artist, I create my paintings um, from cut paper, and I mostly use um, old magazines. I use pages from old magazines and old calendars that people have given to me. So it's really very simple. I just use paper, scissors, and glue. That's it. Oh my gosh, okay. So how did you get into this? It, it, I don't know. <laughs> I sort of fell into it. I had, um, back in the 90s, I took a lot of um, art classes at the Scroll Center. Uh -huh. And because I, I was working a corporate job and it's like, oh no, this isn't, I've got to have something else going on in my life. And so I started taking watercolor classes and then acrylic classes and drawing. And I took a variety of classes in the 90s. But then I became a school teacher. I quit the corporate world and I became a teacher and I couldn't do any art. I didn't have time or energy to do any art at all. So it wasn't until I quit teaching that I just, I literally had, it came to me in a dream that this is what I wanted to do. I saw myself with scissors and paper and a blank sheet of paper and I was just cutting and placing. And I thought, I need to try this. Um, and I had never taken a class in collage uh, ever. So it was one of those, I gotta make this up as I go along. I don't even have the supplies to do what it was that I was um, envision envisioning that I wanted to do. And so that's how I got into it, because I just sat down and tried it one day and it worked and I went, I really like this. I think I finally found my medium. And so I've stayed with it. So you said you finally found your medium. Had you tried yes. other things before that? Yes, I, I thought I wanted to do watercolors. Turns out watercolor is very difficult. And I had to work very, very hard to get anything that even came close to what I wanted it to look like. Um, the problem I had was I didn't do it long enough to be able to actually develop my own style. So every time I did a, a, a painting, it would have a mixture, a blend of styles in it. I never quite got beyond the, doing that. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, all right, I'm gonna try something else. And I went to acrylics and I tried drawing and I took, um, uh, classes. And in the meantime, I've always been doing quilting and things like that. Um, and so, but I never really found something that I, I said, wow, this is what I want to really work with um, until I found cut paper. That's so interesting. Well, it's so interesting to hear you talking about finding your meeting and it being this like aha moment. Because I think other people talk about that with whatever their medium is, like whether it's ceramics or photography. Yeah. So did it literally come to you? You dreamed about? It, it literally did. It was the, it's, I, I know this sounds really silly or it's really strange to talk about it this way, but it was like, I had a dream that I was being interviewed as a very old lady. And I was explaining to somebody, I don't know who, um, about my process. And, and then I was showing them, I was demonstrating this and I was in my dream, I was making a tree. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's why when I woke up, it was like, maybe this is what I need to be doing. And so I do tend to do most of my work is representational. In other words, I start with a photograph, I look at a photograph that I then not that I use that photograph. I don't cut up the photograph. I just use it as my source material. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so sort of how someone might, if they were painting from a photograph, they would be using it as like a reference. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, and that makes sense because you describe this as painting. Yes, it is like painting. It's like painting with paper, with cut paper. Do mm -hmm. you find it harder or easier to blend colors with your 
paper or with your watercolors? Ooh, that's a tough one because you can't really blend. You can't. You, I mean, you can if you know what you're doing and you like using tissue paper and you like layering paper like that. But when I'm working with my magazine papers, no, there's no blending of color. I have to find papers that represent the colors that I want to be using at any given moment. So it's, it's a lot like working on a jigsaw puzzle because mm -hmm. I have to hand select or hand cut every single piece and put it in exactly the right place. So how does your real life process compare to the dream process you were talking about? Oh, that's interesting. Um, my, real, my real life process is, is obviously a lot more complicated um, than the dream than what I saw in the dream. It's, it is, it's a lot more involved, many more steps, lots more uh, pre-work, if you will, um, before I even start to glue something on, onto the backing. There's a lot of work I have to do up front. Like what? Well, first I have to select the photo. I have to know what I'm working from if I'm gonna work on a representational type collage. So I have to find the photo. I have to determine how, what size I'm going to make it. That's a key piece of information you gotta have. So I have to decide what size, size what kind of backing I'm going to use. Um, Cause there's several different things I could, I could use. Um, then once I have that, I have to draw, I have to transfer that image somehow onto my backing. So I have to very meticulously draw it um, at least the major shapes. I have to get those drawn. So I will always grid my backing. I put a grid on it and I put a grid on the photo and then I can oh. know how I reproduce the image on the, on the backing. Then I have to select my papers. So then I have to go, okay, where am I starting? Okay, I always start in the background. So I'm gonna start with this patch of blue sky over here. I need blues. So I have to pull out all my blue paper and go through sheet by sheet until I find a collection of the right colors. Yeah. Then I can start cutting. Then I start cutting shapes and I'll have a big pile of shape, blue shapes. And then I can finally start gluing. So it, there are lots of steps up to building up to being able to start gluing. Is the gluing your favorite part? Yeah, I think so. That's the that uh, that's when you get start getting a little nervous. You know, it's like okay, now I'm really committing myself here. I mm -hmm. have to, you know, the other stuff is is very kind of left brain. I think I'm saying that right. Um, you know, very mechanical. Um, and then when you get into the, the, the cutting of the shapes and the positioning of the shapes, it's like something else takes over. So yes, it probably, that is the best part. <laughs> right. But then I imagine there's like that pressure of, oh my God, I've done all this work. I have drawn this out. I have done this. Thing. Please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good thing, one of the blessings of, of collage, and I think most collage artists will tell you this, one of its, its key blessings is that if you don't like something you've done, you just slap another piece of paper right over it. I mean, you can just cover up mistakes or areas. I, I need to redo that. You know, I'm all done, but I, I don't like that. So I cut some more things and I, I glue them on top until I get what I like, what I think looks best. And you said you like using like magazines and calendar type mm -hmm. paper. Did you, yeah. try, did you try other stuff first, like the tissue paper, things like that? Not first. I actually started with the magazine paper because that's all I had when I'm in my first trials. That's all I had access to. Um, I have tried other papers. Um, you know, a lot of collage artists um, will use uh, manipulated papers. In other words, they'll they'll paint them themselves. They'll mm -hmm. use paper. Um, it may they may start with a nice watercolor paper and then they'll paint something on it and then they'll cut that up. And that, that's what they use. Some collage, collage artists will even um, make their own papers and, and oh. dye their own papers. And, and that's a whole nother technology that I can't even imagine. Um, some people use torn paper. Mm -hmm. So they like all the rough edges. I like the clean edges. 
but some people tear their paper. Mm -hmm. uh, some people use found paper. I was going to pull something out here. You know, the, the inside of an envelope. Yeah. If, you, if you start look, opening envelopes and you see all that wonderful security markings that they do, all those patterns, they're wonderful for collage. So a lot of, our, a lot of collage artists will save things like that, found papers that they can then use in the future in collage. So I have done that. I have, I have a box of those kinds of papers. Um, I'm not into painting my own papers. I, I'm just not. Um, uh, and then some people use what I call decorative papers. I, they're rice papers and imported papers um, that you can buy at an art supply store. And they're beautiful and they're gorgeous colors and interesting patterns and there's fibers sewn, uh, built right into the, the papers, they're lovely. And some people like to use that. And I've got a whole drawer of those too. But I always end up coming back to my magazine papers. That's sort of my standard, so. Do you have a favorite, do you have a favorite magazine you like cutting from or you're like, ooh, this is a good one? <laughs> oh yeah, um, almost all of the high fashion magazines are good. They, and now again, magazines are going out of out of mode. Um, they're getting harder and harder to find decent magazines. But fortunately, people have given them to me over the years. I mean, huge stacks of them. Even Oprah magazines are good. The old Oprah, the original. Um, food magazines. You're written, all, a lot of the food magazines are on nice, thick, glossy paper, and they have close. I love using close-ups of food, um, like. Um, uh, salads and things like that make wonderful trees. You know, you can you, you can pull all kinds of wonderful things out of a close up picture of a salad. So so I just like I just like the the input I get from the magazine papers because of the patterns and the colors and the all of that. So does the um, does the subject matter or the magazine paper matter more? Oh, the, ma the magazine pa paper, the quality of the paper really, really makes it. If you want to enjoy that middle part of working on a collage where you're actually cutting and gluing, you got to have good paper. You mm -hmm. just got to have good paper. Otherwise, you're fighting the, the, the media, you're fighting with it the whole time, and that's not fun. So I guess this would probably be an artistic preference sort of thing, but if you're, you know, doing something where you have a bunch of uh, flowers and you have a better home and gardens, are you like, this is too literal? Or is it like, oh, this is really fun because this is a picture of, of something floral? Uh, for me, that misses the point. I don't want to cut out a flower to use as a flower. Mm -hmm. it, it just, I no, I'd rather cut up a woman's gown, red gown or red lips close-ups of the lipstick ads and things like that, red lips and pink lips make wonderful flower petals. You know, I'd much rather do that and have the interesting textures than, um, or the appearance of texture uh, than being literal like that. Well, and it's so funny to hear you uh, say, you know, at, at the beginning when we were first talking, you're saying, oh, I found my medium because if, you guys, if, if you could see Cynthia's work, like you would not think, oh, she found her medium. Like you would think she's been doing this since she was like a kid cutting stuff up. Like it, it, they're really amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. And so you are on the steering committee for the Atlanta Collage Society. Correct. That's and right. For anyone that doesn't know, the Atlanta Collage Society will be having um, an exhibition at the Hudgens. Uh, the first day it'll be open is on November 28th, that's Saturday after Thanksgiving. Um, but you know, you may be a little bit busy that weekend, so, but it'll be open through the end of January. Yeah. Um, so you have plenty of time to come see it and it's, it's some pretty impressive stuff, but tell anyone who isn't familiar a little bit about Atlanta Collage Society. Well, we are, we are just a group of like-minded individuals who just love collage. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we hold meetings normally, we won't count this year, but normally we hold our meetings every other month um, at the Shalliford Annex in Dunwoody. Um, 
which we used to meet at the Sproul Center, but they have asked groups that are just meeting there to, to move to this other location. Um, and so that's what we've done. So we meet every other month um, for, for two hours on a Monday night. Um, we always, we usually have a guest speaker, um, somebody who does collage, somebody who is a gallerist, um, somebody who, um, just a variety of different people, whatever. Oh, <laughs> are you there? <laughs> um, and so, um, oh, there's our, our website. Great. Um, so, so that those are our meetings. Sometimes we um, work on things together. We'll do show and tell. We'll all bring something that we've been working on and, and um, talk about it, how we did it, that sort of thing. Um, what kind of materials we're using, um, all of those kinds of things. So we love to share what we do with each other. Um, we like to sponsor workshops. Um, we have two mentors who are both professional collage artists um, and um, they will do workshops for us. Um, which we always learn something from uh, every every time we go. You can never stop learning about that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. Sometimes we do large community service projects or small community service projects, depending on on what's needed. Um, last year we did a project at a homeless shelter in Atlanta, and we actually worked with the children and we created as a group. We it was a one day thing and. As a group, we created a nice large collage um, that read home and love and something else. But but it was very interesting and the kids didn't know what they were. They were working on only a small piece of it. And then we put it all together and they could see the, the final outcome. Um, we've also done some um, large projects um, like for the Beltline. Uh, we did a scarecrow for the uh, botanical gardens. And, and these are all projects that we work on as a group, um, which is always wonderful because we get to know each other. We get to know each other's styles and it's, it's just always a wonderful experience. Um, what else? What else should I tell you about our group? <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the show that'll be coming up. Ah. Um, yes, at the at the Hudgens, we're very excited about this, and it's shaping up to be a large show. Um, we're probably going to have seventy or more pieces of art, Kate. I hope that's okay. Um, that's more I, than okay. I, people, everybody, people are responding very, very positively. They're very excited about getting having this opportunity to show their work at the Hudgens, um, and also because this has been such a, a tough year for everyone. Uh, as far as not being able to get out and out and about and uh, show your work. So, so yes, it's going to be a large show. Um, it, we're calling it C is for collage, C as in S-E-E. -E. And our, our goal is to um, have some kind of um, interactive, um, like a piece of paper or something that that um, the viewers can take around with them and we'll we'll give them clues as the things to look for in the collages um, so that so that you can start looking closely at the collage and then also look at it from a distance um, and see how we integrate images inside of our collages. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are, is, it, is this still up on the screen, the website? Is yeah. everybody seeing this? Okay, so so we might say um, in this collage, look for a guitar. Okay, as I look at the, the, the images that are on the screen here in front of me, um, or look for a blue box or something like that. Um, and that's what we're hoping to do with this to to open up new possibilities for people who are seeing our, our work for the first time. Um, I like this. So it's like a scavenger hunt to get you really involved with the pieces. That's a very good way to explain it. That's what we're hoping to do. Yes. Kind of like a scavenger hunt. Yeah. Which is great because as an adult, how often do we get to do a scavenger hunt? Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. That's right. It should be fun. This will be a visual, a visual hunt. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so, so you guys said that typically you guys, you said you meet 
in normal times once a month? Every other month. Every other month. How can people get involved in that or if they want to get involved in collages, what's a good place for them to start? Oh, that's a great, thank you for asking. Um, from the website, I would say start with the website, browse the website, look around. Um, we have an artist gallery on here um, that that will give you, it goes through a number of our, our, our members work. Um, and if you're a member, you can be, you can have a, a piece featured here. Yeah, there you go. Um, and that'll give you an idea of what kinds of things that we do. Um, if you're, if, whether you've done collage before or you haven't, it, it doesn't really matter. You, if you just really like collage and like to, would like to try it, then come to a meeting, sign up for a workshop, ask questions. Um, and, and sometimes in our meetings, we will do, we'll have a little collage exercise. We'll, we'll bring in, you know, uh, three, three different colors of paper and scissors and glue and, and encourage people to create their own collage. And the wonderful thing about collage, even if you go through this gallery, you'll see everybody's work is different. It doesn't matter. You give, give people the same, oh, sorry about that. That's how you get more information is you sign up for our newsletter. Um, but you give people the same supplies, um, a group of artists and every collage will come out entirely different everything will be different. So you see there's a lot of um, abstract work on here. I tend to do representational work, but you'll see there's a lot of abstract. There's another uh, representational one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then we also do assemblages. You'll see in the middle of the screen right now, there's a little box. You see a box with some gears and things in it. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. up there. Um, that's an example of an assemblage, which is a type of collage. So if you, instead of working with paper, if what you want to work with are, you find old gears and hinges and mechanical devices or paper clips or whatever that you are fascinated with, you, by all means, you can create um, collage work using those kinds of materials as well. Um, if you go right below where, where your cursor is, Kate and, and click on John Morse. He's one of our um, mentors and um, he does, he is, he is uh, well known nationally um, and he does some incredible, incredible detail work. And he loves to use things like candy wrappers and um, food wrappers of all kinds. Uh, if you look closely at, at some of these, you'll, it, it's amazing what, what he's, he can put together and what he can create. And he's going to have a piece at the Hudgens also as part of our show. Have you had a chance to see that, Kate, what he's dropped off? He came and he is actually super, super nice guy. I really enjoyed talking with him. Yeah, yeah, he's wonderful. So we've learned a lot from him, having him as our mentor, absolutely. So yeah, that's an example of his work. Do you feel like people just in general who maybe, maybe they're not in the art world, maybe they don't, not familiar with collage that much. Do you feel like there are a lot of misconceptions about what collage is or can be? Yeah, I think so. Um, especially nowadays, you know, the, the term collage is, is a very generic term mm -hmm. and it's used for a lot of different things nowadays. Um, it, you know, obviously the, the base, the root word there is coal, which is from, means glue in French. Um, so it's like anything glued is collage. But if you're doing fine art collage, it's real different than photographic collage, which people do digitally nowadays, um, or decoupage, which is more decorative. Um, so it, it, is, it is often misconstrued. Some people, and there's, a, there's sort of a form of art journaling that's very popular right now, which is wonderful, um, but it's very personal. It's not intended to be fine art that you put in a frame and display. And people will put together images from their vacation, um, you know, bits and pieces of things from their vacation and, and document that way. That's they call that collage too, but those of us that um, use collage as our only medium, 
um, that um, we tend to be a little more uh, discriminating than that. Um, I wouldn't put that in, in the, I wouldn't call that fine art collage. Yeah, it, that to me sounds like, uh, like scrapbooking, like where it's, you're making a journal and stuff like that. Almost, yes. That kind of journaling, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, which so is argue it, being it, an art form. But, but it's not art. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there are people out there who make it into an art, but it's definitely something totally different than what we're seeing here at the Atlanta Collage Society. It's I would put it as fine craft as opposed to fine art, but that's just a, a you know a category I the way I categorize these things. It's not a and isn't that that's that like the age old question, what's art, what's craft? Art versus craft. You can ask ten people and they give you ten different answers. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So there you there you go. You can see a whole different whole range of things. Yep. Um, so for people who are coming to see the show, what would you tell them to, you know, when you're not familiar with the medium, you may not read it in the same way that somebody else who is familiar. So what would you tell people to maybe keep an eye out for or to make, make them enjoy the experience if they don't really know collage? I think that that's kind of what we're going to try to do with this exhibit. That's why we called it C is for collage. We're going to encourage people to look very closely, come right up to it and look at it. Don't just look at it from across the room, but come right up close to it and see how the artist has layered and put together um, disparate things. Um, you, you just don't know what you're gonna get. It's, and, and you look for those little surprises um, that are buried inside there. Um, some collage look, looks, sometimes it looks great from a distance and other times it looks best in, in a sort of more intimate, intimate way by looking up close. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we would encourage people to do is come right up to it, take a look at it. You can't touch it, but um, look at the textures, look at the, look at the way that the things have been layered. Um, and it is a mul um, mixed media sort of thing because a lot of people will use paint as well, paint or mm -hmm. lines or um, machine sewed stitches, or um, sometimes I will use um, like embroidery floss. If I want to make very fine, some kind of fine line or ropes on a ship or, or you know, something on a boat, then I will use embroidery floss on top of the paper. So it's those kinds of things you want to look for. Um, Ashley Lynch, he always watches. Um, hey, Ashley, he wants to know what's the strangest material you've used to collage? Interesting question. Not me personally, but um, Sherry Barrett at the Sproul Center, who's one of our, our mentors, she teaches collage and she will even have people ironing plastic bags and, and it shrinks up and gets all strange looking and, and you use that to collage with. Um, uh, they, she has people dye um, uh, tissue paper with coffee grind, gr coffee grounds. Um, you can use just about anything, anything you find that that is interesting, you can use. Uh, I, me personally, like I said, I tend to stick mostly with, with papers that I know. Um, I'm not a huge experimenter in that, but yeah, just anything, anything. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Yeah. Well, that, that does sound really fun about collages. What I, I guess like the theme I keep hearing you sort of bring back up is there seems like there's so much room within collage for you to find what you're doing. You know, you don't have to even use the same materials, do it in the same way. You can right. bring paint in. So it seems like a pretty open medium if you're a person that doesn't like a lot of constraints. 
There you go. And I think that that's true. I think you're absolutely right. And, and I think that at this show, you're going to see a huge range, a huge range of, of uh, different styles and techniques and, and materials. And um, I, yeah, it, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be a very interesting show. Yeah, oh yeah, I think so too. And then, um, in, it, so will this be a juried exhibition? Yes, it will. Um, Elizabeth Stallings, the artist, is going to be our um, judge. So we will be giving out awards. Um, kind of like what you're doing at the Hudgens, we can't do a, a re normal art reception. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to do an open house for our members and their guests on December 5th. And we're encouraging them to come. Of course, they have to wear masks and go through your, your protocols. Um, but um, that's, that's how we're going to um, give out the awards, if you will. We'll probably already have the awards on the, um, the pieces of art when, by the time they come. And they, they'll just be surprised that way. <laughs> oh, that sounds really fun. Well, and I am happy that, I know we were talking about this before we went on air, but yeah, you're kind of walking the line between wanting something to be interactive for people to enjoy their work, but needing to be responsible and make yes. sure everyone is healthy and safe. Um, I think that's a good way to do it, the way you guys are doing it. Yep. Um, so, uh, and did you say, will the announcements be made um, like virtually, like emails will be sent out or um, will it be on the 5th? It'll be, well, on the 5th, we will we'll have the, um, I'm, I'm envisioning that the ribbons will be hanging on the work and mm -hmm. on, on the 5th. And then I'll contact people via email and, and mail and all that kind of stuff to make sure that they get their awards and they get their, their reward check. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's probably how we'll do that. Yep. Um, and so as people can see on the screen, uh, the website is atlanticollage.org. Yep. Do you guys have a Facebook or an Instagram people could keep up with? Yes, we do. We are on Facebook as well. Not Instagram that I am mm -hmm. aware of, but, but definitely on Facebook. Yes. We also have a Facebook page that you can hang, you can sign up for. And, and um, if you're interested in the Collage Society, sign up to get our newsletter. We have a newsletter that comes mm -hmm. out every other week via email. And uh, if you want to join, there's a uh, form available on the website. Our dues are only $25 a year. Um, and uh, so, you know, join us. Come and, on out. <laughs> and if you guys are watching, as you can see, it'll pop up to offer you the newsletter. So it's super easy to get in touch and start being in the loop. Yes. Are anything else you'd like to just say to people about collage or getting involved? Are there any good resources online or um, places to take classes? Places to take classes, as I mentioned, um, at the Sproul Center for the Arts um, up in Dunwoody, which has been there forever, as far as I know. <laughs> um, Sherry Baird, um, our mentor, teaches collage classes there. She teaches a lot of different classes, but collage is one of them. And she is one of our original founding, uh, founding mothers, I guess. <laughs> I guess you'd call I love that. I think it was her idea, the, the whole Atlanta Collage Society came out of her and a group of her stu collage students way back in 2006, believe it or not. And so, uh, yeah, so she's still there and she is, she is the expert, the local expert, for sure. And is she, um, is she still on the steering committee? No, she's not on the steer. We call on her when we need her. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's already put in her time. Oh, yes, yeah, she has. Absolutely. She's, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and she and John Morse both are, are very, very busy. And so we try to minimize how much pressure we put on them. But they are have always been wonderful about coming, coming to us when we need uh, support or we need one of them to come to a meeting and... and um, give a give a little presentation or whatever they've they're both very responsive 
and, and wonderful to work with. We're very fortunate to have them. Um, and then do you have a website that people could check out to see your work? Sure. I'm just CynthiaFregon.com. It's real easy. That is easy. Well, you could, good job snagging that website. In fact, if you click on that, you should be able to get to it. It's there. Down <laughs> Well, I think this piece was in one of our jury member shows, wasn't it? It might have been a few years ago, yes. It looks familiar to me. Yes, if you click on CynthiaFregon.com, what it brings up, and I don't know how many people out there are aware of, this is called DailyPaintWorks.com. And Daily Paintworks, I've been with them since 2013 now. And this is where I keep my online gallery. Um, and um, it's they push um, images out to their their audience, which I think they have like 10,000 or more. I don't know, I, don't quote me on that. People that receive um, emails from them every single day with about a hundred thumbnail images. And then you click on the, the image and it takes you to that artist page. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful um, place to store your art. <laughs> Um, and display your art and sell your art from here. It is an e-commerce website. Um, and um, plus they do the advertising for you. So it's really wonderful. It um, sounds like a more, uh, it almost sounds like a more social media version of Pinterest, or not Pinterest, um, Etsy, where like you're getting this email of all the stuff and you can buy it. Um, but it's coming right to your inbox, which maybe Etsy has that function. I just don't know about it. Yes, uh, and, and so it is pushed out, yes, every single day. That's why it's called Daily Paint Works. Yeah. But and the advertising for you too is really cool. It is. Yeah. It's That's pretty, pretty neat. And, and they, have, they provide a, a grid where you can track um, it, your entire inventory and whether it's sold, who bought it, um, all of those kinds of pieces, all the status of your art and everything. It's wonderful. Yeah. And is this for, you said this is for like all sorts of artists or just? Yes, no, it's it's for all artists. I don't know about 3D art. They don't, I don't think they, they handle 3D art. I think it's just all 2D art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. That is, it is about time for us to wrap up. Um, I just wanted to thank you again for taking the time to do this. We're at the Hudgens. We're really excited for the show coming up. Well, good. We are too. We are too. Yeah. Yes. All, all right, guys. Um, thank you for watching everybody. And thank you, Cynthia, for coming on. Um, we will see you guys next time. Um, have a great day and you know, stay safe, stay healthy, stay kind. Bye. <laughs> thank you, Kate. Oh, thank you.